It would be wrong to say that life thrives in the lands between. It once did, during a time of abundance we as players will never get to experience. It would be more accurate to say that within the lands between, life persists. There are so many we see in passing throughout our journey who are emaciated. Shambling sacks of flesh and bone that should have died long ago, but cannot find rest due to the removal of the Ruin of Death. Even those who are defeated, cut down in battle, don't truly die, but are recycled through the Erd Tree to live again in a never-ending cycle, which is only broken by the imperfections of the Primordial Crucible, slipping its way into a rebirth and creating an omen. Even those given the respect of an Erd Tree burial are not truly laid to rest, as their ashes can be summoned back to life to serve a master, perpetuating this concept of undeath and servitude to whoever holds the essence of life within their hands. It's important to contextualize this land of undeath before diving into today's topic, because there is little to no information defining their history, but they serve as another example of the twisting of life and death by those who inhabit the lands between. Today, we are discussing the Claymen. These unassuming underground denizens may be tied to the oldest history of the land, a history that has been lost, making them among the most mysterious enemies we faced. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Elden Lore. Whether this is your first time finding the channel or you've been watching from the beginning, we hope you enjoy this Lord Hive. When I started the series, I never expected it would gain this kind of traction, and that's entirely due to the Elden Ring lore community that took us in and decided our explorations were worth their time. If you feel the same way, please consider subscribing to the channel so you don't miss any of our videos in this series. Even if you don't, we're just happy you decided to check us out. Make sure you hit up the Elden Lore playlist, because with over 70 episodes, we're sure you'll be able to find a topic you find interesting. If not, let us know what you'd like us to explore in the comments. Now let's get back to the topic at hand. The Claymen are only found underground in the Siofra and Ainsel rivers. There are a few different variants we can encounter, some carrying spears, others with daggers, and still more that cast magic without a catalyst. South of the Ul Palace ruins, we can find the ashes of two Claymen, which gives us the best in-game explanation of who these people were. Ashen remains in which spirits yet dwell, used to summon the spirits of two clay men. Bowed with age, these spirits are sluggish but hard to stagger. The warped remains of priests who searched for revelation in service of the ancient dynasty. They employ two sorceries that produce smaller and larger bubbles. This description gives us a lot to explore, so we'll start with the fact that they are warped remains. The clay men are not truly living beings. They were once priests, but now they're nothing but animated clay, brought to life through some form of magic we cannot know, as it belonged to their ancient dynasty. We can see after defeating a clay man that their bodies do not simply fall to the ground. They become a puddle of clay, their form completely undone by our attacks. So these creatures are the reanimated remains of priests, but what's more interesting is their use of bubble sorcery. We can even find these sorceries for ourselves. The Oracle Bubbles and Great Oracular Bubble share the same descriptions. Sorcery of the Claymen who served as priests in the ancient dynasty produces a magical bubble that drifts towards foes before they naturally pop. Charging increases the delay before the bubbles pop. The Claymen search for lost oracles within their bubbles. First, we want to clarify our interpretation of their search for oracles. Oracles were people who could see the future or sought prophecy, but we believe the word oracles is being used differently here. A more archaic definition of this word is a response or message given by an oracle, typically one that is ambiguous or obscure. This would mean that the claymen themselves were once oracles searching for prophecy or simply the future. Second, the concept of oracles and their relation to bubbles seems familiar. The oracle envoys utilize horns whose ashes of war produce golden bubbles from the instruments themselves. The envoys, 
who herald the coming of a new age, prophesying it, also utilize bubble magic. Perhaps before the Claymen were made into the abominations they now are, their roles as priests were much like that of the Oracle Envoys. They may have served the purpose of deciphering the future of their ancient dynasty, looking for their new leaders, or determining the best course of action based on the future they could see. This could explain why there are so many claymen, so many priests. If an oracle was found that laid out the end of their civilization, perhaps the people of their dynasty were conscripted, made priests, and forced to study the bubbles, desperately looking for a way to preserve their way of life. Of course, if all that remains of them are the claymen, clearly they did not succeed. When it comes to the ancient dynasty that the Claymen were a part of, there is no clear answer. We find the ruins of the Ul Palace deep below the ground, where most of these enemies gather, and much of the architecture within can be found above ground as well. Tarnished Archaeologist has an amazing video on what this dynasty could have been, so take a minute to open that link above, and keep it in your back pocket for once this video is over. The most apparent piece of architecture we can link between the Ul Palace ruins and the land above is the statue of a bearded man with long skinny arms holding a stone tablet. This statue can also be found throughout the Mogwin dynasty, showing us how Mog is building his legacy on the bones of those who came before. If we look at the long limbs of the Claymen, we can reasonably assume they were once of the same race as this revered figure though who they were is a mystery that may be lost to the ages. There is one weapon that can drop from the Claymen that we believe hints at what ended their ancient dynasty. The Clayman's harpoon is a harpoon with a tip made of a sharpened meteorite shard, wielded by the Claymen who infest dynastic remains. The blade emits a faint light and deals magic damage. The first place your mind may want to go when hearing that they wield a meteorite shard would be that of Estelle and the gravity magics of the Alabaster Lords. After all, they are described as stone-skinned, not unlike clay, and they came from the meteors which fell into the lands between, carrying Estelle and others like her. However, the magic seen on the tips of these harpoons is not purple, it's white. If these meteorites carry magic, and they're not the same kind of magic we've seen carried by meteorites in the past, then the ancient dynasty likely predates even the arrival of Estelle and the gravity magics of the stars. Perhaps this race and their dynasty was wiped out long ago by a different meteorite, one now buried so deeply underground that the only remains of it exist in the spears of these undead priests. Of course, this lighter color is also reminiscent of certain kinds of glintstone, but not closely enough that we'd feel comfortable drawing any theories here. Even with the lines we've drawn, the Claymen are still shrouded in mystery. What was their ancient dynasty? Who or what did they worship? Is their use of clay to create a form of undeath representative of their connection to the land? These are all questions with no concrete answers. We wish there were more to say here, as this is only a glimpse into the forgotten history of the Lands Between. Before the demigods, before the Golden Order, maybe even before the dragons, this ancient dynasty thrived enough that they created their own cycle of death and rebirth, and even learned to use the power of sorcery and bubbles to discern the future. We believe they knew their end was coming, so perhaps the traces of them we can find above ground indicate a different fate. Maybe they aren't gone from the world, and have simply found a way to integrate themselves into the lands between as we know it now. Without more information, we can never truly know. Thank you for joining us for today's episode of Elden Lore. What do you think the lore implications of the Claymen's presence are? Did these former priests allow themselves to be made into clay abominations in an attempt to save their society? Or is the statue of the elongated man that of a king who forced this change upon his subjects to save his dying throne? There are no wrong answers since we can't confirm the truth, so please speculate wildly in the comments. 
Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell so you never miss out on any of our lore dives. We look forward to seeing you again for more Elden Lore.